Hi guys, I'm Sarah Levon and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Whether you're still in quarantine or all that has lifted, I felt like it was important to help make sure that you understand what are the absolute sure signs of labor, also known as when to go to the hospital. It's especially important during this time that we're in quarantine that you only go to the hospital when it is absolutely time to go because we wanna minimize your risk of exposure to germs and not have to do the whole back and forth thing to and from the hospital, no one wants that. So this is still one of the questions that I get all the time and so I'm gonna share with you your sure signs of labor. Make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a future video and then let's get started. If you have seen my when not to go to the hospital video, my when to go to the hospital video, my what is labor video, my vaginal exam video, those are some of like the OG videos that I put out there like over two years ago now. And so what I wanted to do was, especially during this quarantine time, that we're all at home, we're all re-educating ourselves, I wanted to make sure that it was very clear for you when to go to the hospital and then what is actually your signs that you are going into labor slash you are in labor. Because I am still getting so many DMs from you guys, so many comments where you are frustrated that you are still pregnant. You're wondering, is this? does this mean I'll be in labor tomorrow? Does this mean it's coming soon? And there are two sure signs that you are going into labor, you are in labor, that it is time you've finally made it there, okay? So if you haven't seen those four videos, I will link them down below and you can go over there and review that information. But what are your two sure signs that it is time, let's get at it, okay? The first one is that your water breaks. If your water breaks, remember from that video, that is a trickle or a gush where you're like, whoa, I'm soaked. What happened? Like, no joke. I'm for sure that my water broke. There's no question about it. Or that it's like a little like oopsies, like, oh, I there's something coming out of me. Oh, I think I peed. Oh, maybe I didn't pee. I think I peed. Not really sure because it's still coming and I just peed and I thought my bladder was empty, okay? So if you still think that you're leaking, there's this weird trickle, I literally had this happen this week with a mama, then it probably is your water that would be a reason to go to the hospital, okay? We are not rushing to the hospital, we are not running red lights, we are not running stop signs and getting in car accidents on our way there. It is a yay. We're moving our way there, and that would be a sure sign that you're gonna have your baby. Now, you may be having contractions prior to your water breaking, or you may not be having contractions at all, and then your water breaks out of the blue. Most of the time, that's gonna stimulate some contractions, but if your water breaks, that is a sure sign, and I'm not even gonna say necessarily of labor, because there's one that like for sure is your sure sign of labor, but this would be a sure sign, it's time to have a baby. Ideally, we wanna have a baby within about 24 hours of your water breaking, even better, 18. If it takes longer than that, then no big deal. The biggest concern when your water breaks is there's no longer that barrier between the baby's head and your vagina that has a bunch of good bacteria in it, but then that bacteria can creep up into the fluid around the baby and you could end up with an infection. The infection is called chorioamnionitis. I do have a coffee and questions where I talk about choreo. And really all that means is that you spike a fever, your, your baby's heart rate's high or and or your heart rate's high. They give you antibiotics. They bring down your temperature. In theory, you keep laboring. It's not an indication for a C-section alone. There would have to be something else. So people get very stressed about that infection. In fact, this mom I labored with this week was like kind of obsessing about the fact that like I can't get the infection, I can't get the infection. When we finally got down to it, it was because she thought that equaled a C-section. That does not equal a C-section. So we want you to have your baby. You're going to the hospital, you're getting things going, you're getting up and moving, you're trying to get those contractions coming. If they're not already, if you're already having contractions, we expect it to speed up. You're having your baby once your water breaks. You go to the hospital, you are not coming home until your baby is in your arms. Number one is your water breaks, okay? Number two, and this really is your sure sign of labor. Because if you go back to my when not to go to the hospital video, all those things like nausea, feeling a little bit like off, I hear that a lot, like I just feel a little weird or more emotional, or you lose your mucus plug, or you're having little random contractions that make you really excited and make you think that it's happening when really like nothing becomes of it. 
Or you start nesting and you can all of a sudden breathe and you see your baby drop in your abdomen where like all of a sudden you have like a whole hands width of space between your belly and your rib cage all of a sudden. All of those are not signs to go to the hospital. They are signs your body's getting ready. We are gonna hold loosely to the amount of time that it takes for your body to go into labor, even with some of those pre-labor signs. But let's celebrate them because we know there's something happening in your body that's getting you closer. It's more action rather than less action, okay? And then to answer the question, your sure sign of labor is contractions. Now, that's a little bit tricky and where, again, like you can review those other videos, but I'm gonna really hopefully hone in on the difference between Braxton Hicks contractions, contractions, and regular contractions, okay? And contractions that are labor. The only true way to know where you're at in the labor process is by a vaginal exam. And please don't look at my nails right now in this quarantine land, they have not done me well. Okay, mind you, they're shorter than usual. So normally a doctor, a nurse, a midwife would check your cervix and know how dilated you are. But if you're at home and you're trying to stay home, you need to understand what contractions look like when you're probably dilating your cervix, okay? And normally contractions are gonna come and go, okay? So they come, you have a, hoo-ha moment, they go away, you are pain free. If you are having constant pain, that is probably not contractions. That's probably babies positioning in you that's hitting or triggering something. Characteristic contractions are gonna come, they're gonna increase in intensity, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze in your abdomen, might feel like menstrual cramps, lower back pain, probably somewhat tolerable to start out, and then they slowly go away. Anywhere about a minute long, we're gonna go flex and flow on that one, but about a minute long, okay? If your contractions are less than a minute, you are it is not time to go, okay? Now mind you, again, I will side caveat this with the fact that no labor is the same, that I'm generalizing a lot here, that you are trusting your instincts, that if something feels off, if something feels like this baby is coming, then of course I'm gonna tell you to go to the hospital, okay? But in general, your contractions are gonna come, they're gonna get stronger, they're gonna go away, and you're gonna have moments of peace and rest. From the time that the contraction starts to the time the next contraction starts, is the interval of time between contractions. So start to start, if it's five minutes between the start of the first to the next, your contractions are five minutes apart. That piece matters way less than how they feel to you, okay? And I just wanna let you know that as much as you hear online, or I even talked about in my when to go to the hospital video, that when we're trying to stay home on the longer side than really like giving you a concrete number, some of this is fluid. You're gonna hear things like go to the hospital every when your contractions are every five minutes or when they're every three minutes. And I'm gonna say my rule is still every two to four minutes, but they need to be strong. Like where they are, they are moving from, and there will probably be a time in early labor where you're like, yeah, these are strong and I'm breathing and hold on, wow, holy moly, ah, and then they go away. You're waiting for a shift. If you have any question whether this is labor or not, and I'm mostly speaking to you first time moms, but if there is a question where you're like, I'm not really sure, could this be in your mind? It is not, okay? Because when labor actually really progresses and your cervix really is dilating, there will be absolutely no doubt in your mind or your partner's mind that when a contraction comes, it's shh, shut up, shh all consuming, I can't think about the outside world, all I can do right now is cope with the contractions, deal with the pain. <sighs> I don't wanna talk, I don't wanna do anything else. I maybe even don't wanna talk between contractions, okay? And once your contractions have been like that, and I use the word all consuming, I'm still using the word all consuming, for at least two hours, especially now, even in LA, like there's no traffic. People can get to the hospital a lot quicker than they used to be able to, okay? But you wanna, you wanna of course, factor in the hospital ride, but even then, first time moms, you have so much time. Take my childbirth class, I really make this clear. But to summarize, you're there for at least two hours, but you want them to have been consistent. Now, this is the rule. If they have been consistent in strength and frequency, meaning every two to four minutes, not a one-off six minute, not a one-off eight minute, not a one-off 10 minute between them and say they're every two minutes, then four, then eight, then four, then five, then four, then three, then three, then four, then four, then five, then 12, they're still 
irregular, okay? We really gotta slow everything down. And let me just tell you, when I labor at home with people, they want to go to the hospital hours before we actually go. And even then, we're showing up five to six centimeters, okay? Which is the ideal. That's when you wanna show up to the hospital, all right? So ignore till you can't ignore anymore. Then you wanna distract till you can't distract anymore. Almost get in denial about whatever discomfort that you're feeling. You are going to feel random little squeezes, random cramps, random sporadic little things, action going on in your uterus. As long as they are not changing your cervix, that is key. They're not changing your cervix and how you know that is that they're not progressing. They're not getting more frequent. They're not getting stronger over time. Those are considered Braxton Hicks contractions. They're false labor contractions. They're contractions that where your body's prepping, but there's no rhythm. There's no movement in the direction of more intensity, more frequency. If you've been laboring at home, expect to labor at home for a first time mom 12 hours, 24 hours sometimes, guys. And I know that seems overwhelming. And this is where, again, your instinct is everything. If you've been laboring hard and your water breaks, you got your two sure signs of labor, head yourself on in because you know once your water breaks, they're not sending you home no matter what your dilation is, okay? But if you've been laboring and things are still somewhat sporadic and some of them are more tolerable than others, they're still irregular. And we have to be honest with ourselves as much as I know that you want it to be time, we also don't wanna be in denial about what's going on with your body and be realistic that, hey, these contractions are still somewhat irregular. And if you're honest about that and you actually are tuning into, yeah, actually that one was a little bit less. I know I don't want it to be less painful and I know I don't want it to be less sporadic, but if I'm honest, it was a little less. You're probably still in early labor. You can wait at home in theory, as so long as your doctor says so. And you're waiting for those contractions to be solidly regular, where you are moaning and groaning, working through them. Of course, they are the stre same strength or more for at least one to two hours. Second time moms, you're probably gonna be more on like the three to five minute mark, but the frequency is that, and the strength is what I'm talking about. The strength is the same. We're waiting for them to be regular in strength and frequency. And then hopefully you go to the hospital, they do the vaginal exam, and we know for sure exactly what your cervix is. If you want help with this, guys, I am taking on virtual clients. I am, can take on a little bit more than I normally would, and from, from anywhere. So if you are in Alabama, I can help you from LA, given the fact that even now I'm not allowed in the hospitals here in LA during quarantine life. So if this is still quarantine life, labor in the time of corona, even then I offer virtual support. If you want help, if you want a resource to reach out to, to be like, are we sure? Is this, this, and that? I just labored online with somebody for like two days off and on recently, and it was amazing. There was still so much that we could maintain, and for them to have the peace of mind that they had that resource to be like, okay, what do you think? And I'm watching her contract, I'm seeing what's going on, I'm seeing the progression or not, and honestly, like because I've done this so much, I feel very confident that I can help you with that. So if you want that help, I have that help available. Otherwise, you have that criteria. You are looking for contractions coming and going, progressing over time, and being honest with yourself that they are regular in that strength for at least two hours. And honestly, if you don't feel the urge to push, if your water is intact, you are GBS negative, and even that, that's a whole separate video, because you can still probably labor at home, and especially if it's your first baby, then you probably can still continue to labor at home until you need an epidural, you are not coping anymore and moving towards suffering land, which if you haven't seen my epidural or not video, that one will be really helpful for you. Or you're feeling like, look, these contractions are one on top of the other. I'm starting to feel kind of pushy. My water breaks. Go on in, please. You'll show up. You'll be in labor and you will have your beautiful babies. You won't be in the hospital that long and then you can recover and come home and nest and snuggle and enjoy your new family and your new life together. Thank you guys so much for being with me here today. Like I said, I have new services on my website. If you are laboring in the time of Corona, first of all, you can hashtag labor in the time of Corona. And on Instagram, we are following that hashtag if you're a part of the Bundle Birth community. And I'm going through, I'm liking your photos. If you're in labor, do a selfie and we will send you our love. It's a way for us all to be connected together in this time that is different where you're having to adjust expectations and maybe you don't have your doula or even your support 
team there that you were expecting. So go ahead, hashtag your photos. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram because there's lots more going on over there. I have new classes on my website. I have live webinars there that is labor in the time of Corona. So how do we adjust our expectations and really strategize to make the best of the time, the Corona land, given the scenario that we have been presented with. And so I have some great solutions. I've been strategizing and researching and I can talk to you about the data on what we know on pregnancy and birth, what to expect, how to make the most and still maintain that happy birth memory, given the fact that there is a good amount of loss and maybe some grief going on and all of the changes that have been happening in this time. Now, if it isn't time, laboring in the time of Corona. I still have childbirth classes on my website, coping with labor class guys, you need that one. And you also need infant safety and CPR, which are also on my website. So go over there, check it out. Make sure you subscribe down below. Thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate you. I know I say that a lot, but I genuinely so appreciate you guys sticking around and entrusting me with this education. I know there's so many other resources out there that you could go to, I recognize that. And so I appreciate you coming to me hit that little notification bell. And then until next time, don't forget to flex and flow and I will see you soon. Bye. Hey, what about this? What about? I'm so grateful that that stopped and this is off. I'm not hoping I'm going to restart. I'm hungry, you should order something. I see food on your app, there you go. Yeah, I get one mess up too, right? Yeah, you do. Hi, I'm Sarah LaVon and welcome back. Hi. If I get 5,000, you get one. That was your one though, be careful. Ah! Next door neighbor's gonna think you're gonna hear it. Whatever. There you go.